Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Stan Osterman coming to you live and direct from Oahu on the, the main island in the island chain with all the people and all the problems. But we're talking, our guest today is coming to us from the big island where there's not as many people and and probably not as many problems either. At least they're more spread out so they don't bother everybody. But uh, it's a great place. But anyway, I, I was just thinking we're going to be talking about farming today and agriculture and electric agriculture. And so we'll be getting into that. But, you know, as we lined up our guest today, um, he said he's from Waimea on the Big Island, as specifically compared to Waimea on the island of Kauai, which was always confusing for the U.S. Postal Service. So for many people, they refer to the area around Waimea as Kamuela. And I've often wondered why Kamuela doesn't show up on any maps when you go looking for it. And and I found out why a few months ago, and, and this is so this is a little Hawaiian uh, trivia and um, history that a lot of people don't know. Um, the two post offices, the one on Waimea and Kauai and the one on Waimea on the Big Island, the two postmasters got together one day and said, look, we got too much of our mails going to the wrong island and it gets delayed and everything. So we need to figure this out. And so the the postmaster in Waimea on the Big Island his middle name was Kamuela. And so they said, okay, well, the Kauai guys will keep the Waimea post office name and the Big Island post office in Waimea would be called Kamuela. And so that there's no Kamuela district on the Big Island. There's, if you look for the sound, sign of the town, you won't find Kamuela. But if you go to the post office, it says Kamuela post office because that's how they kept the two cities or the two towns in Hawaii separated for the postal service. So our guest today is uh, Mr. David Donald, who is a high tech, um, I'm gonna call him an electric farmer on the Big Island with an interesting background. And um, so David, welcome to the show. He's he's from Waimea slash Kamuela on the Big Island. And um, he's gonna tell us a little bit about what he does, but Dave, could you start off by just telling us about your background a little bit and how you got into coffee farming? Hello, Austin. Um... Thanks for having me on. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you can hear right now, but we're in the middle of a rainstorm. <laughs> so I don't know how it's gonna affect the audio. It's, it's um, okay. Good. So, um, well, my background, my background uh, is from the music industry and then the television and film and commercial industry, and then uh, 3D computer animation, digital special effects, and um, internet and all of that. And uh, in my later years, I discovered farming. And um, the story in short is that where I'm currently living in Waimea, um, there was a two foot tall tree, a little bush, and I asked somebody, I said, what is that? And they said, that's coffee. And I said, how old is it? And they said, it's 25 years old. And I said, well, why is it only two feet tall? And they said, well, you know, coffee doesn't really grow well in Waimea. And that's all they had to say to me. And six months later, that tree was six feet tall and flowering and fruiting for the first time. And the seeds from that tree have grown 4,000 plus trees here on the farm in Lalamilo. And so um, that's how I got into the car <laughs> through serendipity. And um, it just happened that the farm that was um, graciously offered to me to run this experiment um, <clears throat> was off the grid. And they already had solar panels and blue ion batteries installed here. And um, so my interest was how to preserve that and expand upon that. And so I just started investigating what equipment was available, electric sprayers and uh, various other types of battery operated tools. So all my power tools that I have and all the tools that I use to weed whack or trim or cut or prune or whatever, if they're power tools, they're running off of batteries, which are charged to our solar system. So that's the really, I want to say, um, pure way to generate your power. Um, and that's off of your own renewable energy resource being solar. And 
you know, I'm I'm actually interested. I, I know we're, Paul and I are talking to some folks kind of in your neighborhood about doing some uh, hydroelectric off of some old irrigation flumes. And so it'd be neat to see some farmers using the, the irrigation flumes for hydroelectric as well as some solar and maybe even some small scale wind. I'm, I'm not really into the big large scale wind, but some of the smaller turbines are actually pretty cool. But um, so last, uh, last two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I guess Paul came to visit you and, um, and he brought the Toyota Mirai over there to, to not necessarily to mate with your tractor, but to at least uh, have a date with your tractor. And uh, so there's our, the two um, rather unique vehicles on the Big Island of Hawaii. They're both electric powered. One, the tractor is battery powered and the car is hydrogen fuel cell powered. But it's kind of, we see it as the starting point of electric um, farm equipment and electric transportation on the Big Island. So can you tell us a little story about your tractor and um, how you charge it, you know, and, and uh, whether you fast charge it or just use a regular charger or slow charger overnight and things like that? Sure. I, I'm laughing because uh, Lalabino Farm Lots is considered desert. Desert is defined by less than 10 inches of rainfall per year. And apparently we're getting those 10 inches right now <laughs> as we speak because it's just boring. Um, so uh, a friend of yours, uh, Mitch Ewan, uh, okay. who heads up the hydrogen initiative over at uh, HNEI, uh, is also a very good friend of mine. And he's visited the farm and kept a close eye on what I've been doing over here. And uh, I started talking to him about um, hydrogen power, fuel cell powered tractors. And um, uh, that spun off into a discussion about electric tractors because um, there are, I think, two uh, fuel cell powered tractors available, but they're not commercially available. The, the companies have produced them, but they're not selling them in the marketplace. But uh, actually, it was because of Mitch, he did the research. And uh, as you know, he's involved with hydrogen uh, powered buses. Um, and that company is US Hybrid that makes those fuel cells. And one of their partner or sister companies was Selectrac. And uh, so Mitch said, Dave, why don't you check this out? And uh, so I, I, he was instrumental in doing the research and forwarding me to the company. And from there, I dealt with the company. And what was really a decisive factor was they made a small form tractor. Um, and the width of the tractor is 48 inches. So uh, that was crucial because it meant that I could have uh, 10 foot center rows and you know the tree branches will grow out and you may sweep some of them aside but nevertheless you can get down fairly easily down a row of coffee trees and um, with um, a sprayer mounted on the back of the the uh, tractor you know, driven by the PTO the power takeoff um, you can apply uh, micronutrients or uh, natural um, insecticides like soap. Uh, there's various USDA organic soaps uh, that you can apply or neem oil is, is, is one of my all time favorites um, to deal with various types of uh, insects, invasive insects. And um, <clears throat> if you try and do this in farming with a backpack or with an electric sprayer, you're basically going to be doing it seven days a week. Um, and in fact, case in point, I had an electric sprayer and it got to the point that the grove grew so big that I was spraying seven days a week. And um, then I, I bit the bullet and I bought a gasoline powered um, little sprayer, little barrel top sprayer. And that reduced it down to two days for this particular grove. Now with the electric tractor and the sprayer on, on the back of it, it takes me 20 minutes. Wow. So it, it was a crucial uh, moment in being able to manage the farm. And once you have the insects and the nutrition under control, then you back right off the spray because nature takes its course 
healthy plants deliver healthy fruit and fend off insects. Well, that's that's a huge time saver to to go from virtually seven days a week down to just twenty or thirty minutes a day for uh, for setting up your your spraying. And stuff. Um, I'm sorry, when it I'm comes, to turn up the volume here because I can't hear a thing now. It's so loud. The, okay, because uh, of the rain. The rain is just unbelievable. It's okay. just torrential. What a time for this to happen. Well, get all the rain out of your system now because I'm coming over to Gila tomorrow and I don't want to get rained on. <laughs> anyway, um, so you're, you're only, how, you, you use a tractor for other things, obviously, but so on average, you know, do you just like when you're, when you're done using the tractor, it came with its own little charger unit and you just plug that into your, your battery slash um, solar panel system? And yeah, so, so the tractor can be charged using either 110 or 220. I'm using 110. And, um, you know, they say overnight, but typically it takes, if you, if you drain the battery down 20%, which is what they recommend, uh, it takes around seven to eight hours um, to charge it back to full strength. And um, it uh, uses the same type of connector that you would have for an electric car, for instance, for your home. And um, uh, th that plugs into the tractor and the other end, it's just a regular 110 plug. And um, it's, uh, it, it just, everything's powered by the solar systems, uh, the, yeah, the solar panel system. So it's um, very straightforward, very simple. I use the tractor, it's got a front end loader, so we can use the bucket to uh, move um, organic material compost around. Um, you can use it to um, back uh, grade if you wanted to. Uh, there's various kinds of implements that you can put on the PTO or you can tow. Um, it's extremely well made, it's very solid. Um, depending on the operation, it's, it's low power. So it's perfect for my operation. They make two larger models that are far more powerful and much wider and longer. And the thing I have to be most careful with in this tractor is because it's got a very narrow wheelbase. Um, I have to be, yeah. And Lala Milo is great because it's fairly flat, but where other coffee farms are like in South Kona or Hamakua or even over in Kau, um, you're soaked through like this. So yeah. it's not a like tractor farm. You got a high center of gravity and, and a narrow track. And it's easy to fall over. Yeah. And when you have a fully loaded with 100 gallons of water, sure. that's like 1,300 pounds or more. Exactly. So you've got, uh, you've got the farm set up on solar panels and uh, lithium ferrous phosphate batteries to keep you know, to, to store for overnight charging and things like that. And when the sun comes out, the solar panels run stuff in around the farm and charge the batteries up. And that seems to work pretty good for you. Oh, it's phenomenal. I mean, we're, we're powering the entire farm. So we're powering, uh, there's, there's a home on the farm and then there's a hundred foot long barn. And in that barn, there are, you know, refrigerators and uh, a bunch of, uh, electronic devices on trickle chargers. And, um, and the tractor has two batteries, you know, it has the LFB, the lithium ferrous phosphate. Um, that's the main battery, but it also has a little 12 volt battery um, for the start the starter, you know. And I always keep a trickle charger on that. Um, okay. It's sort of standard procedure with me. I always keep trickle chargers on all my vehicles. And yeah. My 12 volt, yeah. Even the, even the Toyota Mariah has a 12 volt battery in the trunk to run instrumentation and stuff, otherwise, your fuel cell won't kick in. And the traction battery it has it, you still need that little 12 volt kicker for uh, for running instrumentation and stuff. So, right. your, your coffee farm, you know, according to Paul, um, you're kind of unique in that you, you specialize in, in kind of I want to call it high end coffee. Or, or um, specialized coffee varieties that that actually command a pretty high price. 
is is that a really good business model for you and would you recommend it for some other maybe some other crops like vanilla or cocoa or are there other crops that could do the same kind of uh, business model as you i think there are um yeah the, the term in the coffee industry is specialty coffee so if folks might be more familiar with wine when they go to a, a store a wine store or grocery store and they'll see points you know 90 points 92 points whatever on a bottle of wine it's on a scale of 100 the same thing for coffee and once your coffee is uh, scored by professionals above 80 points it's considered specialty coffee and uh, i was fortunate enough to have that the coffee from that one little tree that grew all its cakey scored it higher than 80 points and um and so the value rises exponentially. And um, there's a, a very strong um, market, primarily in Asia, but also in the Middle East um, for high-end coffees. In fact, the, the current record to date is for coffee selling at uh, just over $4,500 per pound for green bean. And so, of course, that coffee score is extremely high, probably in the mid to high 90s, and uh, I'm not there yet, yet, <laughs> but I will be. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, farming is a big concern because I'm told that on the island of Hawaii, uh, we import 92% of our food. And so, as you know, if the ships and the planes stop coming, what do we do? Well, Hawaii Island's very fortunate. We're it's a big island. There's 4,000 square miles. We have a lot of energy resources with sun, wind, geothermal, ocean. Um, and we have large ranches. We have a lot of cattle, a lot of uh, sheep. Uh, we have pig. Uh, we have poultry. Um, so, and we have, of course, the ocean. Uh, but farming has gone by the wayside because the return on investment for the labor involved has diminished greatly. So that return on investment, that ROI is key. And with something like specialty coffee, you're entering into the realm of what we call HVAC, high value agricultural products. And you mentioned a few others, um, cacao, vanilla, um, wasabi, uh, medical marijuana. <laughs> um, there are a number of uh, agricultural products that enter into that realm of HVAC. And so when I, you know, I'm in the process of expansion right now. And uh, as we expand, we're dedicating some land to fruits and vegetables. And we're doing it in two ways. Partially, we're just dedicating some land to it, but also we're using some trees as shade trees uh, grown amongst the coffee trees because coffee is an understory tree. So it requires a forest around it to grow properly. And, um, and so that's a way we can get into what we call double profit, uh, where you get the crop from the coffee, but you also get an additional crop. And the increase in um, soil amendments uh, primarily for us, which is compost, uh, all the compost, all the pulp and the husk from the coffee, um, as well as coffee grounds um, and um, uh, some other uh, natural ingredients that we mix in, horse manure. Um, that increase of soil amendment and water is minimal, yet you can get double the crop, depending on, on what you're growing. So um, that's a way of, you know, it may not solve the entire problem, but it's going to put a dent in that 92%. Well, let me let me ask you this. It, it'll put a dent in it because right now gasoline is still like five bucks a gallon. What about when gasoline and diesel go to eight, 10, $12 a gallon and farming, that makes farming that much more expensive if you're using internal combustion, gas engine equipment. 
So yeah. you're sitting there as the, the guy with the electric, the, the only guy in the big island with an electric tractor. I think there's somebody on Oahu that has one. I have a friend that, that runs a friend that runs PVT land. He has the only electric bulldozer on the island. And that's um that's um Steve and Joseph. And but if you guys like those, the price of the electricity is probably gonna stabilize out well ahead of uh fossil fuels in terms of transportation or farm equipment. So do you feel like you're kind of on the cutting edge of the way you're gonna to have to run your farms just to stay into that return on investment realm, whether it's with specialty crops or whether it's with just the crops that we need every day, you know, doing that, doing the complementary uh, agriculture with uh, parsley and trees, you know, that increases your yield, that increases your return on investment. So are those the kind of techniques we need to actually start looking at now for the future? I think so. You know, I, I, I mean, because of a low ROI in food production farming, um, we're not encouraging 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, even 50 year olds to get into it. So a lot of the, the parents and grandparents uh, who own viable farms right now on the island of Hawaii, um, those farms in some cases are being sold off and subdivided and turned into homes and the, the land's not being used for farming. And, um, and that to me is a uh, great shame. Um, and, uh, and, but it's understandable because farming is not for anyone. You know, I spent most of my life uh, behind a desk and now I'm extremely active walking in the fields every day. I walk miles every day and I love it. I mean, it's, it's just been really fantastic for me personally. And, um, and that love, I, I believe, uh, is translated into the quality of the product that comes from the plants. You know, there's, there's a, a farm here in Waimea. Uh, the family was the Hirabara family. Uh, Kurt Hirabara is my fan and they're quite famous. And the produce that they grew was just extraordinary. Uh, I mean, some of the best uh, fresh vegetables I've ever had in my life. And um, Kurt has passed on now and uh, his employees have carried on the farm and they're still producing. And they still produce magnificent quality, but it's because of the love and the passion they have for farming and they put into it. Now, they're producing in a sense, high value agricultural product because it's a very high quality level of vegetables. And so they, sell to all the high-end resorts and restaurants and i'm hoping they do quite well and um <clears throat> you know but that's that's just one example i'm sure there's other farms um that are also producing high-end uh fruits and vegetables i'm not familiar with a lot of them but there's just as you drive through the farm lots here i'd say minimum 50 percent of the land is fallow if not more. So when you see that much, and the farm lots, it's almost 700 acres. So when you see half of that just fields, you know, it's um, it's striking, it's striking. And yeah. this area is, is, is very unique because it's, it's flat, you know, it's level. So it's a good place to farm. Yeah. Well, you know what, we, we have to really focus on several things. Number one is our energy, which my show is mostly about. Um, but we also include in that energy food, because that's energy for people. And so we, we think the farming, sustainable farming piece is really important as part of the holistic sustainability picture for the state of Hawaii. And, and our goal, along with a bunch of other organizations, is to get folks to understand the full spectrum of sustainability, including agriculture. And um, we think that uh, you taking the big step with the electric tractor is, uh, was pretty monumental. And, and I think it's one of the things that's gonna make the difference in the next few years. Well, don't forget that it requires energy on planes and ships to bring food in. Yes. A lot and a lot of time. And the food arrives not that fresh. Um, so, uh, 
growing on this island, encouraging farming on all the islands is very, very important because we save energy in that respect as well, that we don't have ships and planes burning fossil fuels into the atmosphere, um, bringing our food to us. And, um, and because we have so much biomass in the islands here, we can create a lot of compost. And we certainly have enough animals to add to that compost. And uh, so we, we can create really good fertilizer um, and it's volcanic soil. So it's fairly rich in the first place. Um, so, you know, uh, we don't have to depend on chemical fertilizers, which takes energy to produce and then more energy to transport over here. Um, and we can produce our food with our natural biomass and our natural manures and as compost. And uh, we can save a lot of energy. We, we have to start harnessing the sun more. Um, I don't wanna to talk too much about the utility companies, um, but we really need to start becoming more independent. Yeah, and, you, you, don't, you don't have to beat up the utility companies. I do that for you. I've got uh, me and my friends beat up. We don't, we don't want the utility companies getting upset at the farmers. Um, yeah. let, let us take the heat for that. But, um, you know, hey, believe it or not, we're already at the end of our 30 minutes. And um, I just want to do a couple really quick notes. When, he, when we say the term PTO, that's power take off. That's, that's the, it's kind of like an uh, external drive shaft that comes off the tractor that helps turn extra equipment. It's common to other big trucks and tractors and things. And um, what was the other acronym that you used? Um, power take off and- HVAP. Um, yeah. High value agricultural products. Exactly. So I, I try and explain those uh, acronyms when they pop up, but you know, sorry, they, they come in sometimes and I don't catch them until after the fact. But hey, David, thanks for being on the show today. And thanks for what you're doing on the Big Island and moving agriculture forward, especially with electric equipment and, and the specialty coffee. You know, I mean, I think a lot of farmers would probably really get into that kind of farming if they understood that they could make a significant amount of money off of it on a, a relatively small farm, not these mega farms like you see on the mainland. And it's not tourist dependent, it's an export product. So, you know, that's another thing is we don't have to increase tourism just to sell our product at farmer's markets. It's exactly. something that we can sell through export. Exactly. Well, Dave, thanks for, for being on the show today. And it was a pretty much a moon launch getting us set up this, this week, but, uh, but I'm, I'm glad we made it and it, it came off really well. So thanks for your time today. And I'll let you get back uh, now that the rain's hopefully subsided and you can get back on, on your tractor and get some work done. But thanks for being <laughs> on the show today. I really appreciate it. Well, come visit us, Stan. Okay, well, I'm heading your direction tomorrow for a couple of days. I'm gonna help Paul move. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so until next Tuesday, this is Stan the Energy Man with uh, David uh, Donald from the Big Island signing off. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.